How the heck am I supposed to clear all that out to create the farm? Oh man, having some doubts. God, what will you have me do? The first large-scale aquaponic farm and collective is being built in the Philippines and we have built the first farm in record time. We're here in this series to show you from day one what it took and how we got there. Follow along on this pursuit. All right, I do have to give a shout out to Aaron because this man, great musician, great surfer, great dude, one of the sickest farmers around. He has built hundreds of aquaponic farms around the world and he just willingly became our consultant, gave us the blueprints to his plans and we just replicated exactly what he did. I can't take any credit for any of this. He is amazing. Today is the first day we get to take a look at the future farm, the aquaponic farm of Bohol. We are finally getting our property situated here. They're gonna do what they call relocation and they're gonna set up all the boundaries um, so that we can come in and just kind of clear it without uh, going onto anybody else's property. So we're looking for little concrete markers that will determine kind of where the initial property lines are. So we're trying to find the first one. Then from there, the engineers would use a surveying tool to find the angles and find the rest of the borders of the perimeter. This first one, it's like finding a needle in a jungle. So the boundaries were unclear. Everything was a jungle. So we had to bring in some professionals just to let us know where our property started and where the neighbors were. In reality, we were actually looking at a whole different lot, thinking it was ours when it wasn't because we did not know how to read the maps. So it's not very detailed. <laughs> so this is a lot based off of trust and a map that's like looking from an airplane down saying, your land's right there, draw the border. <laughs> we know where one set of marker or one marker is at that we found last time. And we know another one that's on the neighboring property. So what happened was they had to contact the main office in Cebu, which Cebu is the bigger island that has certain documentation. And so that documentation is supposed to give more clear boundary lines. This is a true jungle. The cool thing is we have a water source close to us and a stream that cuts through the bottom of the property. On the wet season, the stream flows. On the dry season, it dries up. But that means there's water down below. Getting ready to go to the farm. Been fun to think about and dream about what is going to become. And I got to say, the first time was definitely overwhelming. But after I was able to digest and think about it, um, it made us more excited. And now we're going to go scope it out to kind of plan out what we're going to do. Attack it, fix it up, clear it out pretty much to get the area assessed and then create some ideas and plans and go from there. You ready to get going? Were you expecting Penelope? I was expecting flat, not curved, and open land, no trees. And yeah, but dead. instead... What? All green, look yep. at that. Definitely. And the sun shining through. God's opened a little light for us. All right, here we go. I did not know I was putting my kids' lives and my life in danger. We're actually trekking through the jungle and there's wild Philippine cobras. There's bees, there's wasps, there's a bunch of stuff that I did not know uh, was a danger to us. I thought we were just trekking through the jungle and we just kept on going at it and luckily we got out safe. A lot of potential in due time. Be a nice little private aqu aquaponic farm for the community. Coconuts, fallen coconuts, the pursuit of coconuts. <laughs> All right, in the Philippines, they have these barangays, which are neighborhoods. And the neighborhoods have a captain and a council. And you have to ask permission to do business, to do certain things and get building permits. So this is my first time 
meeting a lot of the leaders in this neighborhood and pitching the idea of this aquaponic farm right in their backyard. So it's exciting times, but also I had no idea what they were going to think. And also I didn't speak the language well, so we'll see what happens. The Pursuit of Coconuts project is, is working with people, making it healthy for the planet and making profit. We love the river, we love the beaches, but what we fell in love with the most was the people. Our farm is not going to be the farm that feeds everybody. It will be the example farm. So that way I can help other people do the farm yeah. elsewhere. I don't want to hold on to it myself and make all the money. I want to help other farmers build it. Once we learn how to do it here, we will be the consultant with everybody else. To tell you the truth, I think they were just happy to have something new and innovative in their neighborhood and the concept was really beyond what they understood and have seen. But they welcomed me the Filipino style with grace and smiles and it was a go. We are finally getting started on all of this beauty. This is going to be the future aquaponic farm, the first that we know of on this island for sure, and maybe even the center of Visayas. So very provincial. Land is very tough to farm on. It's very uh, rocky, as you can see, this type of volcanic rock. So there's some areas um, that is known for farming, like Carmen, more of the central areas. Um, but a lot of the other areas are tough uh, for farming. So now we are finally finally getting started to clear the land. Um, it's just, it's all manpower here. If we come out, clear the land, we're gonna save all the big trees and we are here to um, witness history in the making. So thank you guys again. Can't wait to take you on a farther journey. This has been just the start, even though there was an uphill battle and we've got a lot more to go. So come check it out. Through video magic, the land is getting cleared. This actually took about a month and a half to clear out about two acres of land manually. So these guys are beasts working away in the humid heat and they got it done. So I really appreciate their hard work and man, I can see a little more into the future. I can't believe this is all done with a few machetes and one chainsaw and yes, we did clear some land. We cut a lot of brushes that grow back very quickly. We saved a lot of the trees that are important and a lot of the endemic and local ones that grow quickly and are not useful, we did cut down. So yes, we did have to clear some land to make this happen. And I know that some people are against it of clearing land, but this was not deep jungle and forest this is actually a residential area that has a lot of homes and this is a small piece that will be given back in due time all right we are here at the farm and they have cleared a bunch of it away so and i think this will be part of the processing area here It'll probably be partly where a building would be a temporary house or a guest house and then we will build the farm on the rest of it this low-lying area all the way through that area over there definitely better view of the land so exciting so after about a month of surveys to figure out where the land was after another month and a half of clearing the land and another few weeks of preparing permits and figuring things out and plans, we got to go to work and we brought the big boys in. The excavators, we decided to do two levels on the bottom. And there's a big hill that we've left untouched for now, but now we kind of know where we want everything. We had to lay everything out and make a couple levels so that way there are some flat areas. But we wanted everything to contour and remain with the land so the water flows and that it remained pretty natural to the existing landscape. Raining, but they're still working. The excavation is going, I predict, three days. I think it will be within three days. It goes to four, I'm okay with that. Let's not do five days. But we pretty much got the first level of where we're gonna do the first planters um, ready. So I'm gonna go look for some contractors after we lay some limestone on top so nothing grows. 
uh, on the dirt and then start laying pathways and figuring things out. Stay tuned. So I had to be here almost every day because I think the vision was mine and how things would operate, get installed. And some of the concerns that I had was that with the dirt being moved around, would the soil be compacted enough? If we're building on it, will things move with the concrete? And so I just needed to make sure that everything was done thoroughly to a standard that I felt comfortable with. So this is one of the reasons why the aquaponic system was going to be important for this island is because as you can see, a lot of the soil is mountainous terrain or hilly and also the dirt is filled with just stones and limestones and volcanic material and it's actually very hard to cultivate the land here. This is really cool and something that I learned is with the trees that we cut down, we saved and used everything, whether it was for firewood or two by fours. So they literally manually cut straight planks of wood so that they can carve it and put it, make it into two by fours or four by fours or two by twos. And it was really cool because we were able to use that in the future builds you'll see in the next videos. Now that everything is kind of laid out, we are ready to pour the driveway and we just, are making it real simple in the beginning here. We're just pouring a lot of limestone down, compacting it and making it a flat area that won't get muddy and that allows for a stable area to park and get through. It's been a challenge in a few ways with the pressure of difficulty of this. And so I'm looking forward to getting this moving. Uh, there will be definitely days that will challenge me more than others. I have to prep my mind body and soul for that so pray for me guys um, but we're getting there we're slowly getting there thanks for following along the first phase of the build here the next phase we're gonna get started with building the aquaponic system on now the contoured land so thank you again for following pursuit of coconuts and we'll see you on the next